Every entrepreneur has one. The moment you decide to start your own business, your story begins. And if you're like most business owners, your plan and your reality can end up being miles apart. Welcome to PTC TV and our series entitled The Journey. Each week, we will be talking to business owners about their business journey. Our hope? is that by sharing these stories, others may find understanding, inspiration, and the will to succeed. So let me ask you, what's your story? Welcome to The Journey, brought to you by Pull the Shoot. I'm your host, Jeff Cecil. Today, I am here with Landon Hampton, and he's the founder of Whether or Not. So welcome to the show. Appreciate thanks so much for having me. It's a, it's a great pleasure and honor. I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so I recently was at an event called Thrive 2023 mm -hmm. where you spoke, and I was absolutely uh, enamored and, and just in awe of your story. So I really <laughs> wanted to, to share it with, with our viewers here today. So um, do me a favor. Start by just give us a little bit of background about you know, how, you, how you got to where you're at today, what, you know, where, where things happened, and and we'll go from there. Certainly, you know, it's been a, a long and winding road, as is everyone's right. I'm from a very small community in uh, Butler County, Kentucky, a very rural area known as Woodbury, right along the Great Green River, you know, grew up there fishing and everything. Um, I went to Butler County High School, you know, whenever I graduated, and uh, I was one of the uh, few, and I consider myself extraordinarily blessed. Since the age of four or five years old, I always knew what I wanted to do. I've always been infatuated with meteorology, and it's always something that I wanted to, uh, you know, participate in. I didn't know exactly how I would fit into that puzzle, and little did I know what it would turn into today. So, graduating from Butler County High School, um, I went to WKU, Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green. Now, at the time, Western did not have a meteorology program, so I was heading out west. And uh, it turned out, uh, whenever I was finishing up my general education, that Western Kentucky approved through their Board of Regents an accredited meteorology program. So two new professors were getting hired, all this stuff, you know. You, right? <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, I wasn't, uh, you know, it's not that I was, you know, worried or scared about leaving home, mm -hmm. but it's nice to be closer at home, obviously, with the support system. Sure. And uh, obviously, my parents were a big fan because it was a little bit easier on the pocketbook. Sure. Sure. <laughs> So whenever I came to WKU, it was quite literally the first day that I started classes my freshman year. I started my first gig in Bowling Green, which was a package loader for UPS. Okay. So I loaded package cars and trailers throughout my entire time at, uh, at the big brown unit, as you know we like to call it. Yep. And coming out of school, uh, I was given a tremendous opportunity and I'm, I'm a firm believer in putting yourself out there. And, you know, if you don't put yourself out there, you, you, you become vulnerable of being told no. But that's the beauty of leadership, right? Yeah. It, it really is. But if you never put yourself out there, you're not vulnerable to get the yes. That's right. And that's what people don't pay attention to. So I put myself out there with UPS Flight Control, their hub for all of their airport and everything. It's located right up uh, Interstate 65 in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Uh, I was granted what's known as a peak assignment to where I got to go up during the holiday season, their busiest rush, and I was the first official intern for UPS Flight Control op Operations in their meteorology department. Wow. Right. Yeah, so there's a, you know, you, you get to doing some research and you learn that UPS, as large as and as massive as they are, there's only five meteorologists that they have hired, and they are all located at the GOC up in Louisville. That's the Global Operations Center. So getting in there and being able to rub elbows with those folks was a tremendous opportunity. Um, I came out of that, and you know, uh, given the opportunity to continue my career with UPS, sounded like a phenomenal idea. And you know, you kind of have the highs of, you know, graduating and having tremendous opportunities and all this stuff. And the whole keeping up with the Joneses, look at what I'm doing, look at what I've accomplished. I found out very quickly that I was not happy. And it was for the first time in my life, you know, it was kind of odd because, again, I've been blessed with the opportunity of being surrounded by phenomenal people. And I didn't know what to do with it because I wasn't happy. I'd not experienced it before. And with a real, you know, 
real deep sigh and trying to get my bearings about me. And after some really hard conversations, I left my job. After nearly seven years with UPS, I stepped away, walked away from the retirement benefits, pay all that good stuff, and I moved into my parents' basement. And I bet UPS was very surprised. By <laughs> <laughs> they were, you know, they weren't the only ones. Uh, you know, my parents and my family and my close friends, uh, some were calling me crazy. But you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Steve Jobs and the big marketing ploy. Whenever Apple did their huge resurgence in the late '90s and early 2000s was we want the crazy people because only the crazy people are crazy enough to think that they can change the world. I love that. So moved into my parents' basement, long story short, not much success at all early on. And then, you know, it's the slow process. And what people, you know, sometimes forget with the slow process is that with the slow process, you're not building your foundation out of toothpicks. You're laying cement. I love that. And going over that and going through the course of this being an operation that's been running now for eight going on nine years it's just tremendous what it's turned into here for the local community that's great that's awesome so when did you so what year are we at when did you start 2013 was the official launch of whether or not bowling green okay. uh, it had taken some forms before that my first ever weather blog was landon's fast forecast super innovative i know don't judge me <laughs> But, you know, again, that's part of the slow process right. like that. That was not a good marketing choice, you know, right. and then I slowly get integrated into social media and uh, my brother had a multimedia advertising company known as Yellowberry here. Okay. And so they were really able to help me come up with a design and, and branding opportunity to really kind of explode and get our name out there. And that is kind of just ushered us into what it is today. So let's describe what it is today. So give us a little bit more so that the viewers understand what you're doing. We uh, call ourselves and we define ourselves as a hyper-local crowdsourced weather information service. Okay. So what we have found throughout you know, research and doing this for going on nearly a decade is what people pay attention to and what they don't pay attention to. You can see weather maps posted everywhere, sure. right? Whether, and especially, it's like the social media age, if there's a snowfall map and somebody, you know, we're, we're not into that. We're into education and we're into teaching that. So we created this hyper-local unit and it's known as the Wobbles region. We even created our own region in Kentucky as like become a thing now, which is really neat. Okay. But uh, it's Warren County, which is the center where Bowling Green and WKU is located. Okay and all of the counties that border it. Okay. So that produces our acronym WABBLES, W-A-B-B-L-E-S, which is just the seven county coverage area taking the first letter out of each county that we cover. Very great, love that. <laughs> yeah. Love that. And so you offer this, and this is just purely over the internet? Yes, it is, okay. yeah. We have a, a you know, wide variety of digital outlets. Um, you know, obviously Facebook, Instagram, Twitter is our primary source with it being a chronological social media feed. Whenever okay. we're putting out weather alerts, the chronological style is extraordinarily important. So we really lean on that platform just because of how efficient it is for us. And uh, you know, YouTube and all that good stuff, and we have our running weather blog online as well. Okay, so there was a, a recent uh, you know, tornado that came through here not long ago. How long, was it about a year ago? Yes, exactly a year ago to the day, uh, just here recently, December 10th okay. into the morning of December 11th. All right. And so how did, how did that affect, I mean, talk to me about what you guys were able to do through that process. Uh, we are really fortunate to have a uh, very, very strong partnership with WKU. Obviously, with being a graduate of the program, again, part of the reason why I created Whether or Not was to give students an opportunity to have an internship. Okay. Because as I had previously mentioned, I was part of the first class coming out of WKU, and I graduated, I believe, with eight other individuals. And I was one of the only ones with a true internship that I got to participate in. Okay. Which obviously, you know, it gives you a great advantage and it gives you more opportunities and networking platform mm -hmm. that you can really utilize. So with WKU, we have students that contribute to our business. Okay. So we'll have three or four students each year that, that we select and we, we'll have an interview process. And those students are given specific duties, whether it's moderating the blog, helping run our social channels, etc. 
So all hands were on deck. We had known for five or six days that this was looking like a really rough weather event that was going to unfold. And unfortunately, that came to fruition. Again, we are not the roll up your sleeves fear mongers. We like to have fun whenever the weather's not serious, but whenever it is serious, we take ourselves very seriously. Sure. That night was, uh, you know, almost like a dream. Uh, the nightmare kind, not, you know, you know, not the right kind. I've been, uh, I've been on the Great Plains. I've chased these things. I've seen 20, 30 tornadoes myself, but nothing can ever, ever prepare you for whenever it happens at home. But, you know, I think what it did for us is, you know, not only, of course, you get exposure out of those things, but everybody started to pick up. The local news stations lost power. Uh, and in that decision-making process, we're still live streaming through our Twitter feed and our Facebook feed, and we were able to help, you know, keep individuals informed. That's great. And it really just kind of opened up, you know, not just our eyes, but the communities as well to say, this is a functioning opportunity. And at the end of the day, and you can ask anyone who knows us or knows me personally and what we do, this isn't Landon's operation. It's not WKU meteorology's operation or the student's operation. This is the community's operation. And that night with us getting real-time reports and real-time photos, from our followers and viewers is what I credit to saving so many lives that night. That's amazing. Because, you know, again, we can put up the weather maps, mm -hmm. we can put up the dangerous radars, and like I say, sometimes, depending upon what color palette you're using, the general public might just look at that as a smurf is vomited on a map. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just, it's not feasible. It's difficult right. to understand. But being able to put real-time photos, and here's where the difference is, my friend, you're able to drive and alter people's behavior. Okay. And when you're, more. when you're able to alter people, people's behavior in the right manner, you save lives. And because they're seeing real time stuff coming through. That's exactly right. And we had so many people, we received, uh, we received a photo from an image from a gentleman in Logan County, which is our far Southwest coverage area. And the tornado came Southwest to Northeast okay. through and it hit his home and it ripped his roof off of his house. But again, servant leadership and what we talk about, leadership in the community, that individual is helping protect his family and making sure everyone's okay, and he did that. Immediately following that, he runs outside, he takes a picture of his house with the roof gone, and he sent out the message, this thing is real, we just got hit, y'all listen to whether or not BG and get to your safe spot. We shared that, retweeted that out to our audience, and immediately we got so many messages, and in the days following, that altered the behavior. And that's the nucleus of this whole thing that we're trying to get to. That's great. I love it. love it. So what have been some of the, uh, the highs and the lows of this journey? <laughs> you know, well, uh, I'll start off with the highs because those are always easy to talk about. You know, whenever you get contacted by the Washington Post who's wanting to do an article on nice. you, yeah. uh, you do it, yeah, sure. you know, and, and, and you really do appreciate it. And being able to see the Weather or Not logo on the top of uh, the Washington Post and a full article about what it is that we're trying to do, you know, it's just amazing. And uh, one of the most popular podcasts out there uh, that's driven by James Spann down in Birmingham is known as Weather Brains. Okay. And, you know, being invited to go on those podcasts and have conversations, it's just, it, it's extremely rewarding. At the same time, you have to talk about the lows, too. Yeah. And, you know, whenever you talk about the lows, I look early on, it was extraordinarily difficult to get things up and going. And, you know, we're just, it's just a fact. We're in rural Kentucky. Yeah. So introducing this whole digital age, whenever social media was introduced, we were spinning, you know, in, uh, in the mud, if you will. Yeah. But after that, you know, you finally get to where you're going. But without the hard times, how are you ever going to make it well or make it any better? We were sent cease and desist letters and we were threatened, you know, to be taking legal action. And uh, again, that was in my younger days and I didn't quite understand what we were doing. But, you know, there's certain things in terms, even in the weather community, that are patented. Wow. that you can't touch. There's trademarks, there's other things that are taken. Okay. 
So, you know, dealing with that, though, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today without that. And funny enough, that kind of spawned my interest on the legal side of things, which I still hold an interest in to this day with, you know, some things that I'm, I'm, I'm partners of and what I participate in now. So at the end of the day, yeah, it was a low, but a tremendous blessing. Yeah, well, you know, and that's the thing that a lot of times with businesses, you know, everyone kind of feels like everything's piling on them and they got to just kind of work their way through it. You know, I always tell people, look, just one thing at a time, just kind of work your way through it. And then all of a sudden you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel and, mm -hmm. and you'll be better for it on the other side. That's right. You know, you just got to keep pushing. Um, and a lot of times that's when people give up too. That's the other struggle, right? Um, I was in a meeting yesterday where they were talking about a clock <clears throat> and they said a lot of times people do well from 12 to nine and then somewhere around nine, they start to give up, right? And if all they did was push to 10, 11 and 12 again would be just great. But, but there's that small piece in there that they just have a tendency to just kind of go, nah, I'm done. And you're right there. You're right there. You're, you're right, right there. there. You're right there. So what's one of the biggest challenges that you're facing today? I think one of the biggest challenges that I'm personally facing today is learning the work-life balance. You know, whenever, whenever you build things, uh, you get contacted to do other things, and I call it the shiny object syndrome. And uh, some of those it's really difficult to say no to. So that's been my real challenge here recently, is taking the extra time not to adore and look at the shiny object, but to remove the shiny lid and really get into the depths of what all this entails. Yeah. And whenever you're able to do that and you're able to time manage in the correct manner, you're able to overcome those things. But I would definitely say that's a season that I'm definitely in right now is learning the correct way to balance those things and to keep the things that are most important. And, you know, for me, that's uh, uh, my faith and it's, uh, it's my family. Yeah. You know, with my wife and our dogs, you know, we had been, uh, you know, having discussions about there might be additions to the family later on, uh, but we're not quite there yet. And I know that, uh, that if I can't get it under control now, right. <laughs> whenever that time comes along, it's going to get a lot more difficult to absolutely, do. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I've, I've always talked a lot about, um, and people say, you use the word time management. Mm -hmm. I always say, um, I don't like to say time management. I like to say managing yourself in time. That's so true. Right. And so, because, you know, time is time. Yep. It is what it is, right? So you got to start blocking yourself out. And, and I te do a lot of this with my clients is I just say, look, block out family time. You gotta make it and just do that, and and you gotta be consistent with it, and say, okay, you know, like my wife is always good um, at around five o'clock. She'll walk in, and she'll go, "How are we doing?" And I go, eh, ten more minutes," and she goes, five. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's, it's the healthy compromise. Yeah, right. It is, you know. <laughs> or I always tell people, like in my early years, I was you know entrepreneurial, and my wife would let me go and go and go, and then all of a sudden it was like the fish hook, right? She'd let the line go out, and all of a sudden she'd go, eh, "No, come on, let's go. You're out too far." And she'd reel me back in. <laughs> You know, um, and, 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 you know, our wives are good for that kind of stuff. They keep us in line for that um, because it's our, our tendency to want to provide and, and to just want to keep going and going and going and to forget to, to take time, um, as I like to say, pull the shoot, which is what this is all about, and, and see where you're at and see where you want to go. So yeah. that's important. So good. I'm glad you're recognizing that. That's really great. So what is the goal for the next, let's say, three years? There's a lot of things that are on the plate um, some that are just getting started, some that are already established, like whether or not. Uh, so continuing with the platform with uh, WKU, uh, I'm on the advisory board for WKU Meteorology. Um, refining that relationship with some things that have already been put in place in the works moving forward. I would love to see those things come to fruition. Uh, I'm also involved in real estate. And as I previously mentioned, uh, one of my business partners is in his final year of law school. So uh, that's another thing that we'll be taking hold of. So, you know, obviously I'm wanting to ignite things and the biggest thing is I want to create, but it, what's really important about creating again, and I know I keep going back to this, but it's keeping the mindset of creating things to serve others. It's not creating things to provide for you because that's so easy to see. You know, and I've experienced it firsthand, whenever you stop caring about the money is whenever it flows righteously to you. And I don't know what it is. I don't know how to explain it to people other than saying it that way. I think you're right on though. Yeah. But you know, uh, just growing the things in my life and you know, always content 
but never fulfilled. That's kind of a motto that I try to go by. Because if I am fulfilled, then that means that I'm going to stop learning. Mm -hmm. And if it's anything that I've tried to put into my life, it's the understanding that, no, the day that I'm going to stop learning is the day that I'm six feet in the ground. That's what separates those that I personally admire from the others, is what I believe. They're always curious. They understand that no one is better than them, but more importantly, they understand that they're not better than anyone else at the same time. No, yeah, and I, and I, lo I love the fact that you're focusing on serving others. It's just, it's, it's the way we need to be. It's really what Pull the Shoot was all about. That's why I did it, because um, it was all about, you know, growing people to grow your company, right? Mm -hmm. and so, and what that is, is that means you're serving others before yourself, because that'll, that'll drive your business every time. So you're, you're right on. So, Landon, thanks so much. I really appreciate you being on the show. Um, I'm excited. Thanks for sharing your story, your journey. For those of you that are watching, we hope that you found this inspiring. You know, sometimes it's it's uh, part of this, the journey that you take that drives you to be successful. Um, and we're just always able and thankful that we can share those stories. So until the next time, stay safe and be healthy.